Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. My name is Alan and I'm here to share with you the experience that we had with this great small device from Ubiquiti, the Unify 6 Lite Access Point. We're gonna divide this video in four short parts where you're gonna be able to have first a short reference of why to migrate to Wi-Fi 6 and its differences with Wi-Fi 5, then I'm gonna show you what you get and how to install it in a standalone way where you're gonna use just one, two or even three access points. Then after that, we're gonna watch how to prepare your AP infrastructure for a bigger enterprise starting with one access point. And finally, we're gonna make a few speed tests that'll give you an idea of what to expect in terms of performance and tweaking of this access point. So let's get started in that order. If you like to grab your laptop and work anywhere at your home or office, and you wanna feel like if you were attached to the physical network, then Wi-Fi 6 is for you. If you want to start migrating your network to Wi-Fi 6, it may look like right now is a good moment to start and even though Wi-Fi 6E is coming and more devices are gonna offer the 6 GHz band and considering it is just a little advantage over the current Wi-Fi 6 in the 5 GHz band, nonetheless, as I'm about to show you, you won't regret at all migrating right now to Wi-Fi 6. We have used Wi-Fi 6 for over a year now, and we've also tested some equipment from TP-Link, the Omata Series APs, which by the way we have tested them and liked very much. Now we're back to Unify with this extraordinary device featuring Wi-Fi 6, the Unify 6 Lite Access Point. Basically because we watched how the network application from Unify finally got a stable appearance and improved, which was a weakness from Ubiquiti not long ago. As we showed you a few months back, it is very feasible today to upgrade your laptop's adapter to Wi-Fi 6, as M.2 cards are widely available now and even PCIe mini cards for older laptops, which still may have quite some time left. I'll leave you the links to those videos in the description. Don't forget that now you also have the alternative of adding a USB Wi-Fi 6 network adapter to any computer. Another great advantage of these access points is that they'll let you keep track of more and more simultaneous and concurrent users. That is an essential advantage of Wi-Fi 6, particularly useful for campuses, schools, hotels, and convention centers. This, for example, is a Wi-Fi 6 AP that even though can manage many simultaneous connections, it serves a lower concurrency of permanent demanding users. By the end of this video, our equipment recommended for those scenarios. If your laptop or desktop, for that matter, already features Wi-Fi 6, well, get a Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now, let's see what we get and how to make a very quick setup. Just by looking at it, you'll get a very compact device. Right here, a side-by-side -side comparison with the Omata EAP610, also Wi-Fi 6 from TP-Link. And like we said, an outstanding device that we've already tested and liked not only for its performance and features, but also for its extraordinary range. It is not just the box, it's the device itself that actually looks more like a toy than a full-size access point. Don't be fooled by appearances as this device also has shown to be of great performance. It is just slightly bigger than the Ubiquiti Unify AP in-wall, great device by the way, which features also a gigabit switch, and you can easily tell the difference with similar APs of previous generations from Unify, as you can see here. The characteristics as well as the technical specifications, you can find them everywhere. Right here, you can see the summary of them and the real experience that we had. You can set up Unify devices in different ways. This means that you can install them and have them up and running in no time for simple installations at home or office. You can install it in a couple of minutes by just downloading the Unify network app, follow the instructions to set it up as a standalone AP, and you'll have instant access to your network you won't even have to create an account with Unify. However, if you want to create one right here, it'll take less than a minute and there may be many benefits from using it. Let me show you how you can quickly install it this way. Open the app and sign into your account, like I said, if you want to. If not, go directly to set up a new device. As it won't find any consoles, click on other setup options and choose standalone Unify access point. Then, scan the QR code in the back of the device or enter the device's serial number manually. Then you just need to set up the parameters of your new device here, like the name of the device, the SSID or network identifier, and the password that you want to have for such network. It'll ask you to set up a password to access the AP from another mobile device. Then, your AP will provision the changes and you'll be ready to have access to blazing speeds Wi-Fi can offer for you. Now let's install it in a scenario where you're gonna prepare for a bigger enterprise solution. If you're planning on having a network that is gonna grow over time, watch what we are about to show you here, which is the essence of unified networks 
such as the ones that you can create using this access point. For this scenario, you can go for any console device featuring the network application service running on them and deploy tens of these units across your organization in no time, among, of course, many other networking equipment. This is how Unify System works. You have a controller right here of the specific service that you're going to use in your network. Then you set the parameters in that devices through its graphical user's interface. Then it'll automatically deploy changes across your organization, either in one or multiple sites. As you saw here, you can use any of the devices from Unify featuring the capability of running such services. We have used Cloud Keys, Unify Dream Machines, UDM Pros, and the Windows-based installation. Of course, you can opt for the operating system of your preference if you choose this option. Also, a very big advantage for those who are beginning to set up their networks is that it is free of charge so that you can run it and back it up as you please. Then you can migrate to any of the consoles that we mentioned. We have even had it running in virtual machines with excellent performance. We're going to show you here how to prepare for this Windows-based controller scenario. To install it, just go to Ubiquitous Downloads and search for the current version. Install it following the instructions. Remember that it needs Java to run. After you have finished the very clean installation process, you can opt to configure all the parameters right now, so when you adopt devices later, they will provision very quickly all the information that you set here. Now you are ready to add devices to your network. Connect the device to your network, being very careful that you check twice that devices have access to your network and not just the PoE switch. This way, they will show up in the dashboard. Another very common problem for not having them appear here is that the firewall blocks the network application, so make sure that it has the proper exemptions active. You can temporarily disable the firewall if you're experiencing such inconvenience. Adopting the device will provision the information associated to the category Wi-Fi network that you configured in this controller. You may adopt one, 10 or 100 devices and it'll take the same time for them to be deployed as members of your network. Well, just a little longer. It is a good idea if you're gonna make big deployments to take pictures of each device's serial number and QR code, just in case installations won't let you have physical access to them. Also learn how to remotely proceed with factory reset. After running a few tests and having used them for quite some time right now, you may compare them with what you may have already seen in our test with Wi-Fi 6 from Omada, where we were able to see how much faster Wi-Fi 6 is actually compared to Wi-Fi 5. Right here, again, the examples. Of course, and this is also very important, link speeds are not actual transfer speeds. You may get 5 or 600 megabit per second links and actually get 300 or 400 megabit per second real transfer speeds. When I am networking and transferring big or huge files through our network, the benefits are just outstanding comparing it to Wi-Fi AC Wave 2. I can transfer huge files through my Wi-Fi at sustained speeds that, quite frankly, are very good. Be aware that these speeds can be tweaked and maxed out depending on the width of the network that you configure in your controller. However, it may also have two negative effects on your network. One, narrowing the compatibility with some clients, and two, being vulnerable to some interference in the spectrum specified for such channel. You can transfer files in half the time you were used to with Wi-Fi 5. If you're looking forward to the enterprise-grade high-density deployments that we mentioned by the beginning of this video, and even for longer-ranging Wi-Fi 6, go for any of the models that Unify has specifically designed for such scenarios, like the Unify 6 Pro, the Unify 6 Enterprise, and the Unify 6 Long Range. Very robust access point. We really hope that this video gave you the information that you needed in case you are considering to migrate to Wi-Fi 6 now that finally there are so many models available and prices are helping us create bigger deployments with a higher density of access points too. Please remember that you incredibly support us by subscribing to our channel and hitting the like button. See you next time.